Blend. The technology now is, and the digital technologies mainly have an analytical power. Now we go into a predictive power, and we have seen the first examples, and your company very much involved into it. But then the next step could be in, to go into a prescriptive uh, mode, which means um, uh, you you do not even have to have elections anymore because you can already uh, predict what uh, predict, and afterwards you can say, why do we need elections? Because we know what the result will be. Yeah, why do we need elections, Führer? I mean, we could just, uh, we know what's going to happen. Why even bother at this point? Yeah, I mean, well, Rich, I guess you're going to be out of a job. Rich, you're not going to say anything to do with I was yeah. just going to say, what's the point of me? Right. There is, what's the point of us? No I'm out of it. I'm out of a gig. I'm right. shutting you down, big data poll. It's all right. over. Even Sorry, the guys. And have a betting line on the election because everyone will know the outcome. We're all done. Cancel my contracts with Decision Desk. There's just no reason to do, do, do it do, anymore. Do, 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 do. This just in. This yeah, Klaus just Schwab in. said Klaus that you Schwab, are redundant. No <laughs> He's a spooky SOB, <laughs> man. Dude, I mean. Emperor Palpatine himself. All over him. It's written all over him. Wow. Execute order. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> That's what he is. Dude, man. I wonder if he's going to get a cameo in Star Wars like what's her name did, the failed governor of uh, Georgia. Oh, claimed, Lord. Right. Who claimed oh, to be God. the governor of Georgia? Stacy. Stacy Abrams, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what the, that's what I thought they meant by the Abrams Accord. I think it was her diet plan on uh, <laughs> Hello, <laughs> hello, <laughs> welcome to the show. Hello, Barris. <laughs> ah. Oh man. And yeah. by the way, yet another what? election, yet another election denier who doesn't get indicted, you know, oh, right. lost by uh four, no, six times the vote margin that Trump lost by yet so in that state, yet somehow. Uh, you know, there was fraud there. You know, it, 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 meanwhile, none of it ever made any sense. Her beef always with, was with the local supervisors of elections that she said purged the voter rolls of African-Americans. Meanwhile, African-Americans were making up a larger share of the vote every year. I mean, none of it made I mean, none of it made any sense. But you have to tell something to the donors you grifted all the money out of to, to registration drive people. Right. You know, it's the same thing to. with Fannie uh, Willis. The oh. uh, Fanny Willis's father was a Black Panther. This would be like the head of yeah. the California Highway Patrol's father being Sonny Barger from the Hell's Angels, right? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. You I know mean, what I mean? Like the guy said to kill cops, he was he was a Black Panther and she's the DA. I mean, it, uh, it's absurd that she's a, 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 in law enforcement. And what better of a governor did Brian Kemp make if he refuses to take all of this new evidence right. and uh, go after her for it and and obviously get rid of uh, the bogus charges against not only Donald Trump, but others have suffered as a result of this. You know, Donald Trump's being hit left and right, but, you know, financially. You know, some of these other co-defendants, those one that one round of charges alone is enough to bankrupt them beyond, you know, the three cases for, you know, the, against Donald Trump, you know, or four, if you count right. the other one. I mean, this is her so, dad, right, Eric? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Black yeah. Panther. Yeah. 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 Wow. It's amazing how many people like, like we've got a, a, a mayor here who is a former Black Panther. We, I mean, there's so many Black Panther or Black Panther adjacent uh, descendants in positions of power, is it yeah. any wonder that J. Edgar Hoover called them the most dangerous group in America uh, during the 60s? I mean, look what they have wrought uh, politically. Tanya Chutkin's from a breed of nuts, too. I mean, uh, she, Tanya Chutkin, the, the judge in, in the D.C. Oh, case. right. That's another one from, from down in Jamaica. From Jamaica. Let me ask, let, yeah. yeah, let me ask you this, though. Why did it take a filing from a co-defendant to level these charges against Fannie Willis? I took maybe 30 minutes to make phone calls uh, with people that I know in the Atlanta metro area. They told me that she is 
a, I mean, I'm, I don't know if, should I use the word that I, I mean, frequently was used. It starts with an S. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, she was, a, but that's fine. And that's fine. But there were all sorts of allegations against her about whether or not she used, um, sex inappropriately right. uh during the decision to file or not file charges i mean there's, well, I, there's I, I a will, lot more on go the ahead I, I will give you my take on that yeah. i believe that these people are intentionally compromised completely being run out of the west wing of the white house they do not want people with a clean slate they want mm. people who they know these secrets about these are badly mm. totally uh, low, right. low graduate uh, law school uh, low IQ legal people that they wanted to be as fronts, mere props yeah. in their re-election uh, 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 attack on Trump. In fact, they do not want people with spotless records. They wanted these cats and chicks who have compromised backgrounds on purpose. Uh, I can see that 100%. Okay. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, uh, that's the way the world works now. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. think people need to understand that. You know, there's like, so. I, and, I, and the good news is I think that newer generations do understand that. I think we have an older generation that still lives kind of in a fantasy world where, you know, this is America and all things are, you know, are, are, all things are, are, are not, maybe not above board, but certainly better than everywhere else. I don't think they understand how bad it really has gotten. Right. So when I see a politician do a complete 180 immediately, my first words to them is how old was she you know like that's immediately <laughs> what that's, I a good, think. that's a good you know, point or i mean or, I've he, or he or he yeah or, or he or, or they or, or it, they or, or yeah or what, what was that a uh, dead hooker or live or live boy i don't know yeah yeah no his body found in topless bar could have been a documentary the, it's just uh, too much i've seen too much i know of um Sadly, it's like on us. It's really incumbent on independent people to bring this information to people mm -hmm. because uh, take Fox News, for example. I had a uh, online friend who was an anchor at Fox News. We kind of got along well because we shared a nationality. Anyway, she's not at Fox News anymore. Very attractive woman. Had a man, was in a relationship, had to deal with the crap that, you know, you've heard a lot of other women had to deal with at Fox News. She and she's not alone. I mean, uh, my friend Don Smith interviewed Gretchen Carlson. The sexcapades that that was her word, the sexcapades at Fox News. Like these people would like feign or fake being Christians on TV to like get evangelicals across the country to watch their morning show and then be adulterers and disgusting, you know, uh, in their private life. And that's fine. But don't and same thing like we see what what happened with Nikki Haley. I'm sure you want to get in with it. There's all these open secrets, you mm -hmm. know. Like the Daily Mail published that report today. Everyone has known about Nikki Haley's alleged affairs for years. And by the way, they're not really alleged. Everybody has known about them for years. And I don't even care about stories like that, guys. What bothers me is when they fake being something they are mm. not. You know, well, like I, I, how about the reverse? How about Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell? Yeah, I mean, when I was over on the left. Uh, working for crooks and liars uh, on the other side, it was an open <laughs> secret about these two guys. Yeah, and yeah. yet they it continues to go on and on and on. Nobody will speak thou thy name. You know, yeah. I mean, it's crazy, Rich Mc McConnell too. Uh, and I even know this, but M I mean, McConnell, you dare to bring anything like that up? He'd pick up the phone and call his hitman in the in the hills, yeah. and they just come at you, man. I mean, you know. Uh, so I understand some people's fear about it, but. Uh, she managed, in her case, to weasel her way through it when she was running for governor. I think the Tea Party surged. There were a lot of people who were willing to look the other way. Um, you know, and 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 you know, when Trump's considering her as UN ambassador, he doesn't care about that crap unless, no. as long as you're open about it. But he doesn't care about it because he just doesn't want it to become a liability where you're compromised. You know, but you what you do in your uh in your own time, if you want to be you know uh, faithful, uh, fine. If not, fine. Uh. But truth be told, he cared more about getting her out of the governor's seat so Henry McMaster could be um, the governor, who is, ma who is MAGA through and through. So he wanted an ally as the governor. Uh, but everybody knew about this stuff, guys. The media doesn't do anything. And I actually am much more offended by her connection to Boeing and yeah. the history yeah. there. Um, finally, after me talking for weeks about this on the show and on social media, I finally get a call maybe four days ago from a reporter asking me, can I have the names of those workers? Like, 
unbelievable. I posted out. There are employees who want to speak about the dirty relationship, you know, and, and by the way, it's rolled in the 737 max and the crashes and nobody wow. bit, nobody bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just incredible until one person uh, had happened to offhand hear me covering the campaign was on the trail. And like somebody said, watch this podcast about what could happen in Iowa. And she heard it and she was mm. like, oh, whoa, oh, went to her whoa. editor and was like, you know, if this pans out, what do you want to do? And he said, I want to go for it. But this Cheryl outlet. Cheryl Atkinson had that same problem when she was at CBS. And I believe yep. it was Boeing as well. Yes. Um, about protected. 10 yep. or 15 years ago. And she got handed her ass. Essentially, it got completely spiked. She had people coming forward. I think there were fires that um, they had a whistleblower, everything, and just spiked the whole damn story. Well, look, at, look at United. United's got a cross-dressing CEO, and all of a sudden, United is the most uh, uh, DEI uh, corporation in America. Is there a connection between this guy's cross-dressing love of trannies and the dirt they have on him and uh, the, yeah. the procedures of hiring at United? Uh, related to Boeing, I mean. Yeah, there are undercover tapes, and I, Cheryl, back when Cheryl Atkinson started this, there were, uh, or started to try to report on them. That's when this really all started. You had, well, I mean, they, they, there was the merger years before, and then there was this uh, attempt to really focus on uh, fighting Airbus and market share. And they used to be about standards of excellence and safety and protecting the pilot. Anyway, all that went out the window when it became more about the money and Nikki or Haley, out the emergency road door. More that's likely, than, than the window. I'm yeah. selling the window. Yeah. Hey, Guys, but that iPhone moved. survived. That iPhone survived from six. That iPhone survived. Oh. It took a licking and kept on ticking. <laughs> I'm telling you, hey man, quality merchandise, a great commercial for Apple. I wonder if it right. shows up. At wonder, keynote. yeah, was it OtterBox around that uh, iPhone? I don't know, you know, but. <laughs> I'll tell you, I mean, some of them are made at this, with the same material that are, um, you know, in Glocks and, and Glocks. I remember, you know, back in the army days, like you chuck this out the window right now and it'll be fine waiting for you when you get down. Um, but yeah, I mean, this stuff that Cheryl Atkinson started to go after was like the beginning of so much that went wrong at that company and they were totally protected. There are tapes undercover tapes that nobody has ever really reported on showing the workers, um, kind of like scared that were clearly cut corners and somebody wanted to say something about it. They had brought quality managers over from uh, Seattle to the plant in Charleston and Nikki Haley's mm -hmm. given them millions of dollars in subsidies to bring over the manufacturing of, of different kinds of aircraft, which included obviously the max. And I mean, these things are in the air. Two planes fell out of the sky. Wow. Nobody wants to talk about this. And nobody wants to talk me about out. Rich <laughs> Barris is other uh, people's pundit. And yes, sir. Our favorite pollster. We did not do an introduction. Fair point, dude. Sorry about that, buddy. <laughs> yeah, we were no. talking before the show started, and and just we, roll to in. me, we just roll right in. Like yeah, I don't we care are, about. Well, we know. Let me just say something. I don't give a shit about that crap. Barris has been on the show. People know who he is. I don't need to waste time by giving a guy's bio uh, who's been on here a bunch of times. I'm sorry if you don't know who he is, but he's the leading pollster in America. And if you don't know that, now you do. So welcome, Rich Barris, to the show. We have a pressing amount of limited time with him. I don't want to eat it up by doing people's bios, but let's go on. Let me let me ask you something. Will this guy, DeSantis, bail out before Tuesday? I think that's what everybody wants to know, Rich. Yeah, I... I uh... Uh, here again, he threw everybody for a loop. He calls a presser at St. Anselm College. Uh, he's an hour late. I just got some notes as I was coming on about, um, you know, the things that we're asking uh, people because the reporters were pissed. It's cold out there, guys. It's cold. You leave people out there like that, they're going to get mad. So right. finally, when they get a hold of him and other people, that I mean, they're expecting, I think it felt like the dropout feeling. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. instead, he just kind of kept going with it. Mark, I know. It's weird. I know. And it's then weird. Like, what state can you win? And he refused to give a single state. And he said, listen, I see a path. And when I don't see a path anymore, uh, I'll drop out. I'm not doing this for my health. And it's like, well, then what are you doing it for, Ron? Because he is saying to people, he is trying and him and his campaign 
trying to say, I don't have to win New Hampshire. I just have to wait out South Carolina and maybe come in second. He's insane. He's not coming. It's in insane. Second. This and is insane. When she loses her home state, she'll be embarrassed and she'll have to drop out. Well, news to you, Ron, and the rest of you, you're going to lose your home state maybe by a bigger margin than she does. You are currently 43 points behind Donald Trump in our last poll <laughs> in Florida. And that was before <laughs> Iowa. So what do you think is going to happen here? Let's be honest. Let's be real with everybody. These two are running for the nominee of the Justice Department. They are not running to be the Good nominee luck. of the Republican Party. Yes. And now we got Tim Scott coming out to endorse Donald oh, there, Trump. Mark Halpern Oof. just a couple of minutes ago rolled up on Nikki Haley uh, <laughs> at, at an event to ask her her, her take on, on Tim Scott. And she said, I'll believe it when I see it, essentially. And he's going, OK, lady. I mean, she and had then, no, no opinion on, on the, the endorsement. Oh, he went back up to her after it became clear it's happening because the images of Tim Scott with Lee Zeldin boarding Trump, uh, Trump, uh, Air, Trump Force One, right? And Tim Scott's going, four more years, baby. That's what he says <laughs> on the video, right? And what's his name? Halpern goes back up to her. You know what she said? What? Guys are going to, or fellas, fellas are going to be fellas. Like, like, they, like it's a sexist what? thing. Tim what? Scott is endorsing Donald Trump because they both are men. It's wow. outrageous. And wow. if that's she truth, did what is, yeah, she did I that swear she too, said that. She said he has a woman problem. Remember that? Unbelievable. Oh, she, might as well, oh. she might as well just join the Democratic Party because the 2024 Whoa. election has got to separate. All right. Everyone's talking about unity. The truth is I'm a pollster. I see it. Trump's base is more unified than Biden's is. The truth yeah. is. They are already Democrats, people who are all of a sudden voting for, for Haley in a primary. Ladies and gentlemen, rest assured, they already voted for Joe Biden in New Hampshire. If they're voting for Nikki Haley now in 2024 in this primary, they voted for Joe Biden in 2020. Trust well, me. Let me ask you just how, aren't how, that many, many. how many people are going to go out and do this political dirty trick in your polling mind. I mean, it seems to me that people talk this all the time, yeah. but I don't think that people really do it. You know this what I mean? Is, like, yeah, this is why it's a little different this year, Mark. Yeah. Uh, the, the interest is dropping and I can tell you why in New Hampshire, it actually is dropping. She right. is getting some of them that are saying it, but the Iowa, they did. There were, that's the only reason she carried Johnson County. They actually stuffed One six vote. more Democrats in at this last, at this precinct oh my at God. the last minute. Just to, is, and by the way, it was after the time the door should have been closed from what the precinct oh captain my tells God. me. So they really pulled this off just to get to, to, get, to get Johnson Trump. County, just to get Johnson. Yes, just what? to deny him a sweep of ninety nine exactly. counties because they didn't like oh the optics God. of the sweep. I kid you not. I That's ins not. insane. Yep. And uh, there was no, there's no contest in Iowa this time around. So you know, you spend millions of dollars trying to convince these people to come out and their same day change in Iowa. There's not in New Hampshire, but there yeah. are still behavioral Democrats who are registered as unaffiliated independents. You know, they're not really independents. They're unaffiliated, but they vote left. And those are the voters Haley's been targeting in New Hampshire. Trump wised up. He started like locking down the Republican primary voter by talking about immigration and some of these other things mm. she's flip flopped on. But it wasn't hurting her with those independents. What is is the attacks on Social Security, not right. her attacks. You know, we're going to raise the retirement age. I want to redo Medicaid. I want to change this. He needed uh, he needed and they figured it out. It may have been a little late, but it's working. Um, they need to tell these leaning democrat leaning independents that yeah you think you love her wait until she guts your social welfare programs to spend on forever wars wait until she raises your father's retirement age to collect oh, the social security check 70 to 70 nah, wait until she shrinks the medicare budget so she can give the rest of it to northrop grumman that's what they always needed to do with her they be they have begun to do that and you can even see uh it, you can see it in the data real time david paleogos we'll see what it is tomorrow but He's the pollster for Suffolk who does a tracking poll for the Boston Globe. And he said this morning, 5 a.m., he said very clearly something's going on. Independents are backing off and saying, you yeah. know what? I changed my mind. I'm not voting because some of that is hitting the airwaves. Yeah. So, yeah, keep that up. And you'll what, what kind of lead do you that. see now that Trump has? Is it 14, 16, 18, 20? What are you seeing now? Yeah, I, in New Hampshire, here's the thing. I want to say it's closer to like pro it probably in reality is closer to 20. And mm -hmm. here's why. 
because we this happened in 16. Trump seemed to like underperform his polls in caucuses and overperform them in the primary. The arc CP average is Trump plus 13.5 only because, guys, they still have that crappy CNN poll from before the caucuses, which was outside of the consensus. It was an outlier to begin with. It had Trump up by seven. The new tracking polls are Trump plus 17, Trump mm -hmm. plus 16, Trump plus right. 14. This is very much in line what we saw in um, in uh, 2016. And Trump actually, because it's a primary where more low propensity Trump voters, it's easier for them to come out. We, he overperformed and he won by 20, 19 and a half. Um, I'm waiting for that last drop from UMass Lowell. They're the poll that really nailed it last time. Um, Anselm College has been a little bit less favorable to Trump, and yet mm -hmm. they still have Trump at 52, Haley right. at 38, and that's so far his weakest poll. Boston Globe's back up to Trump plus 17. I'm um, waiting until that UMass Lowell poll comes out. Those guys. What, what, what is DeSantis at? 5% or something, Rich? What is, what hey, is he going? They're a seriously more undecided guys than they're, or now he went to six. So he's about even with undecided. Oh my God. Yeah. I've never seen political, and I'm not going to use the S word, Hunley, political Harry Carey, like yeah. I've seen oh. this election cycle. Of these two people who clearly are being paid off in various uh, methods, obviously DeSantis with the book deal from from Fox, Murdoch, uh, yeah, uh, the Murdoch book deal, and uh, whatever she's getting from Boeing, I've never seen anything like this where people are yeah. look. If it was a five point lead, I would say bring it on, knock yourselves out. But when you've got leads in these races and these polling, you're just wondering like. These are like kamikaze candidates. Dude, he's at 68 in South Carolina in the new poll oh today. My God. That's her home state. She's at like 25 or something. It's so it's a it's, 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 no like, it's like the knight in the in, in, <laughs> no in Monty Python who's got his arms cut off and says it's just a, a little nick. <laughs> it's just a little nick. It's just yeah. a little nick. I, it's I mean, a it's flesh a, wound. It's a flesh wound. I mean, these are political. <laughs> But she makes sense. DeSantis is the one who makes no sense because Whoa. he was practically the VP candidate for Trump uh, to go this whole way. Now, her, she was done. I mean, what was she going to do? This is a nice play for money. Uh, Rich, confirm it. Was she going to get any kind of position anywhere else? Yeah, no. I mean, she didn't. This is another part of the Boeing story. I mean, in truth, she became uh, a member of the board of Boeing after she left the UN. She asked Trump, listen, can I go? Because I'm broke and the, my family needs the money. And he let her go. As, he said, as long as we part on good terms. She told him at that time, um, I will never run against you. I'll never primary against you. I mean, so this is why Trump gets pissed about this yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's really dirty what some of the people private did. stuff that he's told. It's the private public. stuff, guys. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It's he the private stuff. have a pattern of that. You're yeah. the best president of my lifetime. Yeah, I would never yeah, yeah. primary. You should have heard the smoke that she blew up his, you know what? And here's the kicker. Right. Um, she, I don't know that she had a home at Boeing anymore because Listen, going back to this, she was already affiliated with Boeing when she became the U.N. ambassador. They thought they had protection through friends at the FAA and through the former governor of South Carolina, where the 737 was built yeah. uh, when the Max fell out of the sky. He let the first one go down and said, let's see what happens. The FAA was telling Trump, don't ground it. Um, she, uh, from what I hear, she actually tried to influence that decision. Then when the second one went down, he became, and people don't know this, it's important to know, that's when their political um, capital really tried, or their political backers, their protection, tried to ramp it up, including her. And he told them all to stick it. And he grounded the first president ever to override the FAA and ground an airliner. I mean, folks, this doesn't happen. That's like, no. so she got out, she became on the board, but what else was she going to do for long term? You know, like what was she going to do? Should the well, base she could go back to her, her day job running a 7-Eleven in, in uh, South Carolina. <laughs> oh, Lordy, Lordy. Well, <laughs> apparently from some of the news today, um, yeah. you know, I mean, this is a very t listen, if you're a Republican and you have the audacity to criticize Kamala Harris, but mm -hmm. you're OK with Nikki Haley, you're a hypocrite. Right. Well, you're let's a hypocrite. Talk, you're not here that long. Let's talk about VP uh, candidates in your yep. position. 
your opinions as long as we got you here. What do you, what do you got? What are you saying? I, man, we had such a long conversation. I had Liz Harrington on the show today, the Trump campaign spokesperson. I had her yeah. on the show. And the last one I was going to box her in with and sandbag you, Liz, was the VP. But in truth, I've talked to um, many, uh, you know, privately anyway. And, you know, it, Trump is going to do Trump has an enormous aptitude to, to surprise everybody and do something that is totally not expected. Right. I'm telling you, yes, there are really people in Trump world who are making sure that Nikki Haley doesn't get anywhere near the White House. <laughs> but I don't think that's really that, that's not really a serious thing. When you lie no. to the president the way you she no, lied right. to him, no, no. you're that's done. Never, that's that's how Trump works. works. Yes. I mean, those are Ron DeSantis rumors at this point. Um what you about know, Tim funny. Scott? Uh, I was just, you brought it up. I, was sure. I mean, it's obvious. That's why, I, I, yeah. I'm telling you, I, Laura and I were talking, and, and this before, yeah, today, when we heard he was going to be, uh, he was going to endorse him. We were talking yesterday, and we were talking exactly about this. Everyone's saying Lee Zeldin's on the list, and he is. Slot, yeah. uh, um, uh, what's her name from New York is on the list. I'm at least uh, Stefanik. Stefanik. Definitely yeah. on the yeah. list. So is Ben Carson. Uh, but Laura and I are like, you know what? I bet you he's going to pick somebody like Tim Scott. We both like at the well, same time. Well, he checks time, all the Tim boxes, Rich. Scott. I mean, he's yeah. in a state, a, a state that's in play. He He's black. He's loyal. He's a, a pretty good speaker. Uh, I mean, he checks a lot of boxes. Let me put it that way. The one I worry about the most is, and this is what's so weird about his decision this year. If he doesn't want one of two things to happen, he better pick the right VP. And of course, mm -hmm. the first thing is, the establishment in the Senate and the House just wage a full on coup, remove him and then put the vice president as the president. They will right. do that. to him. Absolutely. And Absolutely. then two, if they can't pull that off, somebody's going to take a shot at the guy. I'm tired. Well, you're, of like you're, you're, are you talking real. about having impeachment insurance like Barnes talks about? Absolutely. Like having, having a Kerry Lake in there where it's worse than Trump. She's running there. for Senate. That's out. No, no, yeah. I know, but I'm saying but yeah. the bank is, is, but yeah. is insurance yeah. if you're going to go that way. It because, has to be yeah. somebody yeah. they are like more, not maybe even more concerned about, but they get, they, they benefit. Like they're not going to get another yard up the field, guys. You know what I mean? Like right. taking him out, maybe at best uh, is a stalemate, you know on fourth down and, and at worst maybe you get sacked in the middle of it and you get knocked back 10 yards that's what you need to make them think so otherwise Stefanik or, you. Stefanik or uh, Vivek or who else is there yeah, Tim Scott so would worry me in that I know, I know. it's because he's a little too comfortable I know I, think, I know, for, uh, I, know. I know I know I, I gotta be honest that. I Stefanik I am not sufficiently satisfied that she okay. is okay. she is FISA reauthorization for FISA right, right, um, you know right. she does does she you know come out and fight when it's all the right times to do it yes i know people who work for her i know people yeah. who have uh volunteered they tell me she's like very very smart and she's playing the game really well and when she's ready to drop a hammer she's going to drop that hammer mm -hmm. and that's cool if that's true that's cool she's a smart woman and she played mm -hmm. me you know what i mean good and good for her she wanted to play mccarthy when he was in she wanted to play. you know i mean she's dealing with the cards that are dealt her if that's true then okay, I'm just not satisfied yet. Uh, I want to see. I would like to see Trump totally break Larry out Elder. of the box, guys. You Larry know, Elder. I, I would take like Larry who? Elder in a second. Larry Elder. Larry Elder. That's a, actually he's, he's an, nobody will debate the guy. On, I mean, I would pay everything to see Larry Elder versus the pothead woman from Jamaica, uh, 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 <laughs> Kamala Harris. I mean, oh, I mean. Dude, I, that would just be a massively entertaining. And, and by the way, that would go against Newsom as well, because Larry Elder knows everything about California and Newsom. He's deep in that. So if Newsom slides in at the last minute, say Larry Elder may not be a bad VP candidate, especially in that regard. Well, she would still she... be VP and uh, Harris would still remain as VP. I'm, what I'm what I'm suggesting is that that, that debate between Elder and Oh, it'd be Kamala hilarious. Harris would annihilate her. Would, would be like black on black crime, which I like. <laughs> <laughs> it would be like it'd be you like mean black on Tulsi. Jamaican crime. Black on Jamaican Indian crime. <laughs> Jamaican Indian, that's right. Well, I remember tell you Tulsi what. and um Kamala, right? When Tulsi right. just gutted her. I mean, it would yeah, be yeah. like Tulsi times ten. Yeah. Just she ended. continuous. She yeah. ended her. Yes. She did. 
that I mean the, that uh, rattling off her role as uh, attorney general and prosecuting black and brown, you know, uh, offenders. She yeah. put a fork in the in her, and that was it. She was when Tulsi was done with Kamala Harris, her campaign was over. I mean, that was just unbelievable. It has to be somebody like that. I'm not buying the regional appeal argument. We're pe I think we're in a part of our politics or an era where that's like over. And I also think that a lot of that came from um, a fallacy from like Lyndon Baines Johnson, like JFK. I knew you were picks. Say, I knew yeah, you were he's the yeah. strongest argument for VP picks to carry a state. He, he's like the academic argument you'll hear in college when we're fight fighting over this stuff all the time yeah. like we used to. Uh, but um, I think it was kind of overblown. You know, I really do believe that. The president's the one who ultimately carries the day and wins the votes. I will say this, it couldn't hurt to keep in mind because they flat out told me today that they're fighting for urban areas. There are going to be urban wow. areas. They are wow. fighting. For. I asked her point blank because I'm listening to the president. Did you hear him in the Iowa speech guys? Uh, you know, he was, he was, you know, talking about the inner city and we can't leave them behind. It's they're mm -hmm. part of us too. And that's why CNN and MSNBC turned it off by the way. They well, don't the want key, the, the key yeah. to taking a battleground state like Pennsylvania is to go into the belly of the beast in Philly Allegheny, and baby. drive a stake in to the heart of the corruption in Philadelphia, yeah. taking like a little bit past the margin of fraud. That's that it. You're talking about by knocking it down by 10 to 20 percent, you could take the state. That's so it. it makes sense as a strategy. I think that's what you're getting at. Everyone harps and drones yeah. on and on about the suburbs. The math is not that difficult. Right. If you have somebody like Donald Trump who squeezes so much, I say this all the time, but he squeezes like more blood out of the rural stone than anybody because, and if you read Kevin Phillips's book, The Emerging Republican Majority, it wouldn't surprise you. He gets a kind of uh, left wing populist rural voter that won't come out for a Republican. So when, what does that mean? And it's the difference between like 67% in the county versus 74%, 73. He gets this like up country, especially in Appalachia areas. And there are a lot of them in Pennsylvania, in Ohio, in the Ohio Valley. He gets those voters that used to be like a Bernie populist voter from 16, but they mm -hmm. abandoned Bernie because he abandoned them, right? Mm -hmm. And they, But those voters won't vote for other Republicans. If you can couple that together with this new appeal he very clearly has among urban non-whites, uh, and you knock, like you just said, it doesn't take much. Have you, you seen how many black rappers piece. have endorsed him recently? Rick? Oh, yeah. I, I, the I other mean, day when we were polling. Holy crap. Even Lil Wayne is in. And, and Lil Wayne loves coating uh, 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 cough syrup. But let, I'll take the endorsement. These people have huge <laughs> followings. I'm telling you, it's uh, on, in every poll we do. This is now a common thing. There is some non-white person in the urban area who wants to rattle off about how right. their whole them and their whole family are going for Trump. They're done. This is, I mean, this is real. And mm -hmm. what the only the only thing left to do is convince these voters you want their vote. You're mm -hmm. serious and you yeah. care. Oh, yeah. And that's all it takes. You go to the urban areas and that's it. Well, you, you go in with Mike Tyson. And yes. and and Floyd Mayweather people. in Vegas. Yeah, or Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You go in and you do that. Those people will. They, They'll go crazy. Will They'll come back down. To crazy. Yeah. Yes. Well, let Mike me. Tyson will finally, do it too. He'll do it. Of course, Tyson would do it. Just a few minutes left. But I, I want to just ask you about the RFK uh, uh, new plan to create these uh -huh. political parties state by state. What, yeah. What's your take on that? That's actually the more difficult way to do it. That's what I thought. That's the what the hell I thought. he's doing? I, I know. It doesn't seem, first of all, when they released the targeting list on which states they were going to even try to get on the ballot, I'm thinking to myself, you're missing the easiest states. Some of these that you're going after are the hardest states. And to get, folks, we, we did a whole show on this. It got like eight. 150,000 views and it was going um, through all these different states what the individual rules were and that's people who saw that episode know what you and I are talking about which is mm -hmm. he's creating now not an independent candidacy where they have to get signatures for one person an independent guy he's right. creating a new organization that in many states will have to will be subject to additional requirements and people don't tend to support new organizations. It was kind of cute. Some of the plays on words yeah. made it even sound like a right-wing group in Texas. Yeah, yeah, in yeah, one yeah, state, in Texas. Right? Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that doesn't always work. There are very few states where things like that have caught on. Uh, United Utah caught on in Utah. I mean, but in other states, especially like Minnesota, um, Nevada, I mean, so we in the Rust Belt, uh, Pennsylvania is a little bit more difficult than some of the other ones, but Michigan, uh, you could get on these ballots much easier as an independent. And if you go back and look at 2020, you'll see there's several independents on the ballots in those states. It makes little sense for him to do what he's doing, especially if he wants to get on Georgia or Arizona, which are well, very yeah, difficult. I, I thought originally he was going to use it the shell of another party, like the Green Party or the Liberal that Party. Would have been the, but they have infrastructure. That's what I thought, for, right? Yeah. 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 But they have infrastructure, and that would have right. been a smart thing to do. But Stein, he, didn't do he didn't do that. Jill Stein now is on the ballot in Arizona. It's a right. major development, by the You're way. You're telling Maybe. me he couldn't push out Jill Stein and get in there and take over or the libertarians. Green Party. They, they probably would have. Yeah, they probably. I mean, look, they were opening their arms for uh, Cornell West, who also yeah. made a yeah. major mistake by bowing yeah. out of the Green Party. Yes. You want to yes. make your name in another shell and then go and create a new organization. Well, you, you don't have any name recognition if you yeah. if you call it. You know the the political pot party or whatever you want to call it, you've got no name recognition, no preference yeah. party, uh, no shit party. You know, I mean, here, if you had the Green Party, uh, at least you've got some name recognition of a structure, right? And you're also talking, yes, and you're also talking about different, like, logistical nightmare. You're talking now about different material and different training things and different, you know, because you got to go out there and get these people to gather still uh, support for these organizations. You're wow. going to have to have different ones in different states, depending on the name of the organization. You're going to have flyers and do I mean, or mailers and, and uh, dorm literature and whatever else you're trying to do to reach I mean, people with different isn't, things. Isn't it, isn't it really a dry run for 2028 for this guy? I, mean, I, what, I is, tell you, I, what is the, the deal? Way it with makes this? sense. It's yeah. still, I've heard you know people say maybe he's trying to throw the electoral college to the House of Representatives. Um, and that's that a, could that's be, a crap shoot. That's but a crap I don't. It, yeah, I mean, the if you're looking at the polling right now, you can't be thinking that's a viable plan. Um, yeah, I really think he's just kind of trying to build something up. If he would have stayed, like I said, um, you know, with his original plan, um, then maybe he could like now Dean Phillips is trying, then maybe he could have built up a little bit more momentum. I know he had a date, a deadline. He had to make a decision to go independent, right, right, but right. I'm telling you, I was on with Mal Mark Halpern on Newsmax talking about this and Mark's right. I mean, it's just not serious. They're yeah, not, yeah, they're yeah. not organized. Well, it's not, not only serious. that, not only that, as time goes on, and this is, this is, I just wanted to sum this and up. And the daughter-in-law thing is nuts, man. What are you uh, doing? Well, we'll get in, we'll get into that in another oh, episode, no. but the, 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 as time goes <laughs> on, when you see, and think about what I'm saying to you now, as you see Trump racking up victory after victory after victory in these primaries that neither Biden nor RFK are involved in, and I mean yeah. that on the Democratic side, there is no winning, to, there's no spiking of the football by the, the incumbent president, yeah. nor this RFK Jr. They are merely on the sideline. And yeah. add on yeah. nine months of being on the sideline, no convention for RFK, no primary victories, no nothing. He's having rallies with 200 people. I mean, how long is this sustainable? You're going to see it. Trump in stadium level yeah. uh, events. You're going to see Trump winning primary after primary. I think the psychological effect is even going to hamper Biden of not being. I was being just going to say that that's right. one yeah. of Haley's issues in uh, New Hampshire is that unlike Iowa, there is this like right same day. There's this uh, election, but it's a write in and you have to write in Biden. They have to get some of those voters. Haley's trying to get to vote in the Republican primary to write him in, guys, because he's going to be embarrassed and humiliated right. if he's not. And this is going to this is we already see it in the polling. It's like Trump's voters are the only ones who have this huge intensity. And I, if I was a Democrat, I would be worried, especially one who supports Biden. I would be worried that it's nothing but victory after victory, yeah. juice after juice right, right. for Donald Trump. And we can already see that right. all of the it's other non two primaries. Yeah. All right. of the, yeah, whether you're talking about the general election, or even the primary. At this point, we already see evidence that everyone else's voter is just deflated. They're just sitting there. It's deflated. They're sitting there. What is he going to do? Come out and make a MAGA statement after each Trump victory of each primary? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's just going to deflate your limited base, right, Rich? I mean, yeah, 
Yeah, okay. I totally agree. I would be okay. seriously worried yes. about this yes. if I was them because he Trump needed, is just going to build up he a, needed a person he could beat up like the New Jersey generals for the Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah. I, <laughs> am I wrong, Rich? No, he needed no, somebody man. that he could declare victory over yeah. in a primary. By their total fear of having any competition, they've now boxed this guy in to Loserville where yeah. he's just going to have to issue a press release about every single Trump rally and victory. And it's going to take a cumulative psychological effect on his voters. I told I, that's yeah, that's exactly. You got a great point. I totally agree that that is the biggest danger for them at yep. this point. And all he's going to do is come out with the same nonsense. Yeah. 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 MAGA extremist. Good MAGA luck. Extremist. Even Good luck. Jamie Diamond knows that isn't going to work. You hear Jamie Diamond the other day. Yes. He said, you're talking about 80 million people. Yes, They're not. You absurd. can't dismiss them because you suck. It's a, you know, it's I mean, absurd. It's just, he's got his finger in the wind. He knows which he way. Knows what's he knows which brother. way the wind yeah. blows. Come Let on. Let me tell you, these guys come spend on. a lot of money on models to see i mean there's a morgan stanley have. guy who came out the other day saying that biden's never going to get to the uh, the convention he's going to bail out before that which is something i've been saying for four months they he's don't never... have anybody really to put in there that's the problem well, i mean really they don't have a newsom newsom trump will crush him probably worse than he'll crush biden we well, can hold it yeah, <laughs> yeah people hope. think he's like a dirty slimy you know well, i've uh, never yeah. held anybody back before you yeah, know. but they, he doesn't pull well in the Rust Belt. He's a Democratic Mitt Romney. I mean, if you look at the, the that, hair. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. That's a good way to play. Yeah, it. he's a Democratic Romney. Yeah, he does remind me of that. Very. Yeah. And what happened to Romney was missing millions of his base, didn't even show up for him, you know. And yeah, uh, yeah. so, I mean, they they did this to themselves. And it really, they did it before they started rigging the primary for Biden. Right. They did it when they rigged the 2020 primary for Biden because yeah. they killed their bench having Barack Obama chase out all of those people to stop the front runner. Listen, the party wanted Bernie. He was on his way to securing the nomination on their Super Tuesday. Barack Obama had a two week gap and uh, started with South Carolina, but he still could have lost it. He had a two week gap. He called Pete Buttigieg, obviously bribed him out with the transportation post. He called everybody in media he could. We, the narrative is if you vote for Bernie, Trump is going to beat Bernie. And they pushed that nonstop for two weeks to the point where we had voters in all of those states, Minnesota, Maine, telling us my heart is with Bernie, but I, I, I believe that Bernie can't beat Trump. And that was like something that developed over a 14 day period. It was certainly um, one of Barack Obama's uh, plans and it was smart. You know, it was, it was an old electability argument, but it also was coupled with calling all of those other people, Warren Klobuchar, you know, get the hell out. We have to make sure that Biden secures this. Biden is the only president and nominee of a party to lose the early states, all three early states. He didn't yeah. even place in these states. And they Barack Obama intervened. And Did he you see how bad he so looked high. with that commercial with uh, uh, Barack Obama this week? There was a side-by-side -side commercial that they put out, uh, uh, Obama and, and Biden, where it made Biden look even worse. I didn't. Of, oh, you got to see that's this. Why it, it's a 90-second spot. It, it, it'll terrify you because it makes, you know, Obama looks like Obama. But when you put them side by side, it makes Biden look a hundred times worse. He had like yeah. one sentence in the commercial. You know, it's like, hey, here's my puppet. You know, it's like some Charlie <laughs> McCarthy puppet uh, vaudeville act. That's why uh, Rad, that I, I I have heard of it, and that's why Rasmussen um, asked the question they asked. I don't know if you guys saw the poll results today, but like two thirds of the country think that. Obama is running the country. Well, because he is. Yes. I mean, what yeah, is, I know. I, but it's amazing <laughs> that many people at this point actually believe it. And right, uh, right, from, right. it was my understanding that it was like some appearance or something that happened. That's why they asked yeah. that question. Well, it's also coming around with the stolen election. It's also coming around with huge numbers swinging about COVID. I mean, yeah. all of these numbers are swinging massively oh, now where it's two thirds of this, two thirds of Americans yeah. believe that. Well, yeah. anyway. Rich, thank you for coming by. Tell us where we can find you. Do your anytime. Where, yeah, where can anytime, these people guys. find you? Where, where, where are you? The best place. I mean, yeah. we're everywhere, <laughs> but the best place is yeah. locals. 
peoplespundit.locals.com do right it like on, Mark, a little bit peoplespundit.locals.com right. got That's a lot right. of stuff got a lot of all those um it's and it's if you're signed up for locals it's all free i mean we've had all these yeah. election results the maps they look great i'm super happy with them get a lot of stuff over there guys check it out yeah and also <laughs> if you're a member of locals uh, of ours you could go over to riches i could That's go right. over to Barnes is it's a family of locals. That's right. So once you pay for one of them, it would behoove you to go check out the other ones. They're free yeah. people. So if you're on our locals, you go over to Riches, you can go over to Viva Barnes and check them all out. Uh, and that's how the system is working right now. It's a social family. It's yeah. a social yeah, yeah, yeah. Family. it really is, you know? Yeah, and it's cool. uh it's cool. yeah, go check it out, guys. You'll love it. You'll love it. All Good right, Rich. Well, people. we'll see you. We'll see you soon with some new polling updates. All the best, gentlemen. All right, right Bobby. Thank man. you. Thank you, Bobby. Later. Bye -bye. All right, Mark. Good news. What? We have a sponsor. Okay, we'll do that because I'm gonna. I just got to grab something <laughs> real quick. <laughs> right. All right, everybody. I'm happy to announce that a sponsor that I really, really like, Moon Doze Coffee, is back again, and I like these guys so much. I got rid of my fake Kerrig, wasn't really a Kerrig, it was an iCoffee, single coffee maker, bought a carafe where I make pots of coffee, I drink my adrenaline injection every day. Now, so I mean, I'm not only pitching them, I do drink this every day. Love their coffee. What I love about it is I can actually drink this coffee without having any cream in it. I normally drink the coffee when um, with cream, but I don't have to have cream inside of this coffee. It's rich enough. It doesn't taste burnt. Whoa, it's not like Starbucks or anything Whoa. like that. It's excellent, excellent coffee. And they have this week, they've got a, a new flavor again. What? Let's see. Yeah, well, they have the blueberry cream, which is new. And he told me that we they now have a French vanilla. I bet oh, you I would French, French vanilla. No, no, I love French vanilla. Have the guy if the guy has a spare one, send him over. I'd like to try it myself and give it a nice review. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, um, I would. I would try that. I'm so picky about the flavored coffees that it's got to be the right uh, flavor to make it work. Yeah, French vanilla. I think is that's a good universal coffee. Yeah. Too. a yeah, good yeah, yeah. dessert coffee. Really, um, great for everybody to check out. And as a being regular, they have one code available, and you go to Mundo's Coffee or Mundo's Artisan Coffee.com slash AUS. If you're a first time mm -hmm. customer, you get 10% off. What? So you can't go wrong on this. I have had nothing but outstanding, outstanding feedback, like Dustin here. He bought a shit ton of whole bean Mundo's the other day, four bags. He's a four bagger. He's a four in case, bagger. In case the bag on his head breaks, there's three people with bags on their heads. Way to go, Dustin. Way to go. Well, we can always count on Dustin because uh, Dustin. Uh, also well, hopefully, said, we'll he be ran at the late up in, uh, in 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 Youngstown, right? Oh yeah, he's going to be there. He ran late this afternoon, wore roller skates, and drafted behind a city bus, but he made it on time for the show. There used to be a thing we used to do in New York where you get on the back of the city bus as kids. It goes all the way back to the 1930s. Uh, we just jump on the back of the bus as it's moving. And you, you look back on any bus and there's kids hanging on the back of the bumper of a city bus, you know, making faces at the people inside the bus. And that's what Dustin likes to do uh, in Youngstown, Ohio. Exactly. And Circus Poo, it is, I have no cream in the coffee just because it's it's warm. It's, it's um, it has a, a good thickness, and I don't feel like I need any cream to tone it down. I'm, I'm not sure how to explain it. I'm not, you know, super good at describing, but but the cream kind of gives coffee a body, and it tones down the burnt edges. This doesn't have any burnt edges, so I, right. I've literally stopped buying that. Everybody, check them out. Check it out. Please support them. It helps <clears throat> a ton, especially as we get demonetized at every turn. And there's a story I think that people probably want us to talk about involving. Wait a minute, Hunley. What are you trying to say? Is this I, breaking news, Hunley? Yeah, it's a bit of a breaking news story. I yeah. sent my gun to the FBI and they broke my gun. That's how do right. I get my how do I get my money back from the FBI lab? <laughs> I don't know, but you know, you know this what? story is as old as the show itself, right, Eric? I mean, it's been almost two and a half years 
Yes, since, this channel. Since the shooting, uh, he's talking about the Alec Baldwin, obviously, yes. story breaking today, but this is as old as the channel. This, this, ch it's actually older than this channel. This channel <laughs> was built the day after he shot Helena Hutchins. Oh my God, I didn't pull the trigger. Oh my God. Whew. But somebody pulled the trigger named yeah. Harry Morrissey and the grand jury in Santa Fe. Wow. Indicted. To, You're talking about the indictment of, of Alec Baldwin. Today. That is correct. Uh, Holy Alec Baldwin crap. was indicted today. Holy Here is crap. the indictment. Some people predicted this a while back, but it took long enough. Oh, well, it, well, keep in mind that it happened and then unhappened and then right. happened. But it was dismissed uh, again, with, with with prejudice. So we, they, they left that door open, I think. But is, now we've got two indictments. Woohoo! So that's very interesting. Count one, involuntary manslaughter, negligent use of a firearm. And then count one, involuntary manslaughter, without due caution or circumspection. Wow. Which is wow. interesting. Now, yeah. what, what's... What are the penalties on this? Does it say there? or uh, I think it it's 18 into, months. 18 months, yeah. yeah and yeah. I'm sure that they would be concurrent, but yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I can't see that. I don't know, though, but she wants him bad. She's got to get a scalp at this point. Otherwise, she looks like a Mama Luke. You don't want to yeah. look like a Mama Luke. I mean, this chick, this is the one that went after you, right? Who called you up in the middle of the night, breathing heavily <laughs> into you. Oh, look, I got Hunley to laugh. Another accomplishment. The, uh, no, but she's the happen. one who wanted uh, the text messages, right? Am I correct? Mm, yeah, yes, yes. Okay, she wanted okay. my source. Your source, as they say in the news business. Yeah, she definitely Huntley was willing to go on a starvation diet and be in solitary confinement for up to six years to, before he would give up his source. Bravo to you. Yeah, I was hiding under my desk. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so we got uh, we got uh, Lane Looper. Lane Looper's right? back. So let's who's go. Never missed, look. He's never missed a meal in his life, Lane Looper. Speaking about uh, uh, right. Uh, okay, we. Climate. These witnesses, okay, you have Alexandra Hancock, who you affectionately call the Breck girl. That's the Breck girl. Oh, it's all coming back to me now. The, so, the, the uh, Breck girl, we got her. Well, she was at Hooters before she was uh, at the state police, right? Or um, oh, I don't. She's the like one that. who worked at Hooters. But yeah, this is her. Right. And then you have Brian McDonald. I had to uh, look him up. He is a... He is a weapons expert oh, who, right. um, with a very interesting visage. Anyway, right. <laughs> this oh, guy wow, is that. the weapons guy that they called in the expert to say, "Hey, it was uh, it was wrong. You never point guns at people." Blah blah blah. Um, I'm not sure about his background. He doesn't have a whole lot of titles to his credit. He's no mm -hmm. Thel Reed. He definitely well, he's, he's has no Seth Kenny either, right? Uh, no, he is not yeah. Seth Kenny, and was uh, talking to Seth earlier uh, about this. So he Seth then confirmed one of the names for me, a Connor Rice. Yeah, I might be going out of order on this. Right, um, Connor is that, Rice. Is that Connor Rice, brown rice or white rice? <laughs> I have no idea. But Connor Rice, I was not sure about who he was. Who but is he? Yeah, he. Okay, this is the weird thing. He is the lead investigator according to Seth, for um, for the DA. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's he, like the dude. He's like the dude that what's your name hired Fannie Willis down uh, in Georgia. Um, yes. Okay. Except, well, no, that guy was a lawyer, but yes, uh, he is a, an investigator. But this I found interesting. I can't say for sure that this is the same person. Well, maybe we but, shouldn't say it then. I mean, if you're uh, not no, sure. no, no. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm just going to say okay. it. I right. did find because I was trying to find anything Connor Rice law enforcement related. You know, there is an Albuquerque Police Department officer who was found not guilty in a battery case named Connor Rice. Mm -hmm. Don't know if it's the same guy or not, but okay. well, that's maybe. that's interesting. The only other thing I knew about Connor Rice is that he came up as part of that charge. Um, hold on, let me go ahead and share this tab. Against Hannah Reed about bringing a gun into a bar. Yeah, what is this now? I mean, she she's obviously licensed to carry a firearm. They have some obscure statute in New Mexico that you can't bring a gun into a bar. I guess it, it, it's is it's, this a fourth class misdemeanor or something, or what is the deal with this charge? I, I think they're just. It almost feels like bullying her. I mean, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. really, yeah, yeah. really is very, very frustrating. Yeah. But she was, she carried a gun into a dive bar. It's not a country song, but anyway, 
and they charged her. They also were charging her. Now, this one's legit to me, if it's if it's real, for supposedly hiding cocaine for from some, someone else, right? From someone else on the set. Okay. Uh, I don't know it's actor. So I don't know if it's crew. I don't know what, but supposedly you know hampering or interfering with the investigation. Okay. Um, for for that, so it, it, that would make sense. That if you add that as a charge, but adding a charge about a gun in a bar, that just that's yeah, yeah. that feels that, that, sketchy that, as hell. Sketchy as hell, especially if someone who's in the gun business in a in a in a state where you know people do have guns and she does have a, a permit. Uh, I think it's some obscure statute that they have about carrying a gun in a bar within Santa Fe city limits, probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, that's probably. Yeah. yeah. Well, they want to. Friend, oh, this is great. I love Lane, this photo. Yeah. Lane ahead. Looper is back. Our friend. He, Dude, he was the one who. Um, that pro that proves that men can get pregnant. That photo is, is obviously he's a <laughs> transsexual. He was a woman and now he's obviously pregnant. Go on. Yeah. Anyway, Lane Looper is the one who very famously led the camera crew off of the set that morning, um, got into a spat with Alex saying, hey, you you know, you got to pay for a hotel. Some of it seemed legit that mm. they, they were putting the camera crew an hour away, whereas they're all staying locally and the crew wasn't getting sleep. So I don't want to speak too lightly about the claim. I get it. Mm -hmm. But that's what he was known for. I kind of knew if they were going to have a grand jury that he would be there. I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, he he yeah. was a, oh, yeah. a Especially because of the, the free buffet that the grand jury traditionally gets in Santa Fe. So he was down. <laughs> now, if this trial is in a number of months away, I'm going to try to get down there. Um, I don't want to go in the winter. It's freaking cold there, by the way. Oh, oh yeah, it is. So, yeah, uh, so I mean, if it's Hannah's, in June. Yeah, Hannah's, Hannah's is February 21st, so it'll be cold. Oh, I'm going to miss that one. I'm sorry. Now, now what do you got here? This is Ross Adego or okay. Adiego. He is another camera department member. Right. So, so Lo just... Looper was first AC uh, in the camera department, in case yes. if I recall correctly. The focus uh, puller, yeah. Yeah. That's a, he's a glorified uh, cameraman. I mean, if you're a first AD, first AC mm -hmm. on an independent film, you would be like a PA on a real film. I mean, that's, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, if that's hey. your rank, if that's your rank on a low budget indie, bro. You know. Okay, and this is uh, Marissa Papel, and Marissa is I, I looked up founder, same person. She is an evidence technician, and apparently is a dog groomer, groomer as well. At one point, uh, you need some side hustles, Gabe. I have some side hustles. Yeah, it could be, but I, it looks like she was a evidence technician in Florida, like Sarasota or somewhere, and then uh, okay. moved to Santa Fe, became a, a evidence technician there. Might have had a gig in between with the dog grooming. I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it makes sense an evidence technician would be, you know, for the grand jury. And then, um, well, the 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 big one is somebody who is uh, run in circles. That we also cover. Okay. Well, I think first of all, this is it, you might want to give that he's a forensic science shooting reconstructionist, Michael Hag, with his father, Luke Hag. I don't know if Luke's still around, but um Lucian, I believe, is retired. Right. And, okay, that's and... his dad. Uh, Michael Hag is is coming in for the prosecution to deal with the gun and reconstruction of angles. Uh, just so we know, just to get back, as we were joking about it, the gun, Eric, was sent to the FBI who broke it. Oh, yes. Am I wrong about this? They just. No, that's absolutely. <laughs> okay. I, because I found this to be so similar to another case. Um, yeah, they they did break the gun in testing. <laughs> right. right. Um, I, I haven't gotten it, you know, with full confirmation, but my understanding is that they asked for the FBI to test every possible way to see if that gun could go off without the trigger being so pulled, they, they, which they involved it, them going yeah. all the way to breaking it, you know, because right, they dropped it off the Empire State Building, which or it hammered sense. it or, you know, yeah. or whatever. It, yeah. So but, it kind of makes sense. If you say prove that it cannot happen, you know, they went all the way to the level of breaking. Well, it. this is my gift to Alec Baldwin, because I feel that he suffered enough. Nobody mm -hmm. knows more about, uh, other than Rob Reiner, uh, about the Kennedy assassination than Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin, who spoke at one of the conferences in Pennsylvania, Eric, I believe in Pittsburgh, 
uh, while we were the, at uh, Lansdowne. Competitive, the, the competitive, competitive conference. conference. Alec Baldwin, unbeknownst to me and Hunley, is apparently one of the world's leading JFK conspiracy uh, theorists, along with Rob Reiner, who, by the way, named the shooters uh, last week, which we will get into at some point. Um, but Rob Reiner and Alec Baldwin, two far left, white, bloated Democratic operatives, apparently, and I'm, I'm not even joking, know the conspiratorial theories of the JFK assassination inside and out. Right. Would you agree to that, Eric, from what we have understood? Yes. Uh, well, more than we realize, like Rob Reiner, I think, developed a project for. Yes. And everything. Yes. And Much that like became, you developed, you know, the Oswald yeah, script. Yeah, and that's he, what brought you in. Right. He said that uh, the guy at whatever studio it was that he was dealing with got fired and then the project went into turnaround. So he did a podcast and he really knows his stuff. I don't agree with his conclusions. And apparently Baldwin spoke at at this conference in Pittsburgh. Um for the 60th anniversary. So here's my gift, Alec Baldwin. This is a gift. This guy, Michael Hagg, who Eric has just shown, in 2013 was involved with his father uh, doing a reconstruction of the shooting by the alleged assassin, Lee Harvey Oswald, and came up with the conclusion that the bullet could go through uh, JFK's neck out of his throat into Connolly and be uh, shot by Lee Harvey Oswald. Now, no two subjects have had more videos on our channel than JFK and Alec Baldwin. We have now found a man who combines both subjects for it's us. It's a bridge. It's, it's, a, it's a bridge. I, Michael Hagg has now, and this is my gift to Alec Baldwin. Michael Hagg is a lone nutter Warren Commission bullet reconstructionist for the Warren Commission. And if Alec Baldwin gets this video that I'm saying right now, this is my gift to you, Alec, from Massapequa to Massapequa, you can shred this guy, Hag, on the Warren Commission uh, 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 report that he treats as religion and destroy him as a, as a witness. If your lawyers uh, will bring me in as a consultant, I'll be happy to work with you to dismantle Michael Hag, or you could do it yourself. This is my gift to Alec Baldwin. Go after this Michael Hag and destroy him as a witness through his uh, uh, Warren Commission single bullet theory killing Kennedy and shooting Connolly. Go on, Eric. Show the article. Yeah, uh, here, here it is. I mean, it's, 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 uh, this to is me, from 2013, it's, by the way. And supposedly he and his father, by the way, both participated yes. yeah, in yeah, the yeah. CBS 50th anniversary yes. single bullet uh, marching the line the whole way. So, yeah, it brings into question their entire level. Of, of course, of course it does. This is why Alec Baldwin can shred this guy. I mean, it is. Um, wow. Quite, quite There's great remarkable. quotes in there, too. There's a quote by Michael Hagg, I think, um, uh, talking about how easy the shot was for Oswald to make killing both of them or shooting both of them. Just crazy Warren Commission stuff for this guy. Well, here we go. Luke said, it's like a badly thrown football. It normally flies true and straight. When this bullet emerged from Kennedy or by or any ballistic medium, it's now yawing and tumbling. Mm -hmm. The entry wound in Connolly is very important because it's a consequence of a yawed bullet. Mm -hmm. So it had to be destabilized bullet from somewhere. Right. But there's another quote from Mike. Isn't there a quote a little further uh, down from yeah, Michael? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Asked if he believes if it was just, well, I wanted to get them both in it. Yeah, okay. Uh, asked if he believes it was just one bullet. Michael Hag said, as far as the neck wounds to the president and the wounds to John Connolly, absolutely. Woohoo! Lee Harvey Oswald didn't have to be a good marksman <laughs> no. to accomplish the assassination, according to Michael, Michael Hag. The leading I've expert this, in the Baldwin case. <laughs> yep. I've shot this drill these distances with a firearm that my dad acquired that is exactly the same as Oswald's rifle with an ammunition of this type. There it is. There, there's your way for Alec Baldwin to melt this uh, uh, prosecution witness. Thanks for stopping by, Alec. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to put that in there because it's a, we needed to go through this anyway because it's been a while since Eric and I uh, talked about this case. But we were the first ones on this case from day one. The LA Times was quoting our show at the beginning, and uh, obviously Eric became a target. He had to go on the run. He went into the witness protection program where he hid out in Arizona for a while. I mean, we've been through a lot as a Nate team. the lawyer actually <laughs> Nate the lawyer had to come in, <laughs> got to bring in Nate the lawyer. I mean, this thing has legs that won't die. And now to, oh. to, to cross the bridge 
to the JFK assassination. I have a massive erection right now. I just want to share that with the audience. I mean, intellectually, that is not physically. But uh, anyway, it's just a great keep, day. Keep in mind, Mark, this has been going on longer than they will serve in a sentence if of they're course, convicted. Of course, of course. Wow, so, it, it's it's mind blowing. It's um, mind blowing. It's mind blowing. But yeah, we did have to cover it. I mean, there's not much else to cover on that. There's some interesting right. things though, like um. Carrie Morrissey, I, I was looking earlier because we were going to talk about what was going with Hannah. Um, Hannah Reed, she wants her ex's death excluded. That's another pile That's on. That's another crazy. The guy died in a motorcycle accident in another state the year before, and they're trying to right. link her. her, her uh, right. They're trying to show. Yeah. They're trying to show that she's so irresponsible that she gives the keys to somebody who's intoxicated or whatever. Or it lets him um ride and die um that she walks into a bar with a gun on, on and on i mean and then as i was looking i found out that dave halls had to complain to the judge to get his address sealed or redacted from documents because carrie morrissey was putting it out there and he was getting people harassing him calling him chasing around like and her excuse was well we need him to testify and I'm like, this, this, I don't know. I, this prosecutor really, well, and well, I've dealt with her. She's very, know, I, very, I very aggressive. Aggressive. Uh, and, well, there'll uh, be more. Let's deal with this next week when we get some more information. This, bro this just broke today. We've got some other news to cover, but we just wanted to get into this thing. Um, where do you want to go from here? Like, what's all your... right? Well, let's let's go, go to ahead. Let's, we're, because... we're, gonna, we're running out of time, so we got a lot of stories. Yeah, and no, we, we've got we really super got to get to and all that. So let's, let's go. go let's to, go. Come uh, on, chop, Chris. Chop, chop, chop. Chris Sununu. Oh, yeah. Friend. Thank you. Thank you. This crazy episode, I was watching these two guys go at it the other night. And I'm not a huge fan of bowling, but bowling got pissed off at Sununu, who is clearly carrying rhino water, anti never trumper, uh, supporting Nikki Haley into some sort. Do you want to run a little segment of it? or I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll hit the play. And see. Join me now yeah. is New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu. Governor, good to have you, my friend. Now we should let, you, let, let, the, let the audience know that you've... Uh, How far in was it? Because it's about 10 minutes here. No, no, no. I just it does. I just wanted you to hear his voice. We don't, we don't really have to get into it because that's not the story I want to cover. He this guy... Got absolutely nowhere to go. We have a... Okay. Yeah, they get into a, a spat. Uh, the two of them, and he's just going around in circles, uh, Chris Sununu, who I didn't even know was the governor of New Hampshire, by the way. I, I thought his father was still the governor of New Hampshire. But I thought to myself, Chris Sununu, where have I heard that name? And then I went back to 1998. Now, this is a, this, you'll appreciate this. This guy, I, I'll just tell you this straight up. That guy, when he was a young, drinking, preppy, uh, uh, Izod Lacoste wearing sweater douchebag, and he may still be one, rented my apartment in New York and trashed it. And I, I got the apartment back and there were physical, I, I know you'd like this one, honey. that's why I wanted to skip that part. This guy, this mutt, rented my apartment in 1998. He was going, he got out of MIT and I just remembered this. I went through some notes. 1998, he got out of MIT and he partied the entire summer while going to NYU film school, where he only survived two months, I guess because he was drunk and disorderly, I had four foot holes in my walls. I don't know what was going on. Uh, I had to keep the security deposit, obviously. Uh, the guy must have just gone crazy in my apartment on the Upper West Side. I was in L.A. at the time. And that's my connection to Chris Sununu, who I never remembered until I saw him on Eric Bowling last night going, holy crap. That's the preppy douchebag who trashed my apartment in New York in 1998. Him and the monk director, same apartment? Same apartment. The monk director <laughs> and Chris Sununu. Both the, the, the monk director didn't trash it, but he tried to change the locks and stay in there. But the Chris Sununu um, uh, uh, episode, I'll never forget. And and that guy, uh, his the memory came back when he was fighting stupidly with Eric Bowling over Nikki Haley. So I just wanted to get that story out there. Uh, no big deal. But there is this story, which is in today's Epic Times. Uh, government raid on Amish farm sparks outrage. I just wanted to put this out. I'm getting a hard copy of the Epic Times now, which is great to read. And in the story, they talk about this raid on the farm, right? And they're covering it, you know, like a great straight AP story. A guy named Matthew Lisiak, uh, it says a warrant served on, the, on this guy. 
uh, blah, 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 sought, among other things, illegal raw milk and raw milk products. Uh, the warrant stated that Miller was never licensed uh, his retail operation, according to Lancaster Online. Attorney Robert Barnes, who represents Mr. Miller, issued a statement claiming that the raid was a violation of his client's constitutional rights. Quote, the Department of Agriculture of the state of Pennsylvania suddenly came without notice, raided Amos's farm and detained everything Amos had in his farm's freezer. They did so in a lawless manner without appropriate authority in violation of their own rules and regulations, Mr. Barnes said. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to read that because just to see Robert's name in a front page article in a newspaper regarding this, I got a big thrill out of it. So I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah, it's like uh, like his time with Wesley Snipes. Yeah, yeah. It's been a while. It's been a while. So I saw that and I went, oh, my God, I, I, I there's Barnes. Do you know that guy? Do you know that guy. <laughs> wow, it's a quote from Barnes. Right on. No, no so, wonder he's busy. Okay, so um, let's go into a, a second of a trailer. Right. Yeah. And, oh, uh, yes, yes. If we could get away with this. Well, yes, a little I, bit of it. A little bit of it. Hunter yeah. Stockton Thompson. The thing that, Is that, that astounded me when I first saw Aspen was that. I'm oh. trying to pause at little points so it doesn't have too much. Right. And can't well, snake, look, you know, don't even whatever. take a chance. It doesn't matter because this is a trailer for a film called Fear and Loathing in Aspen. Uh, it's about two years old. It's directed. It's a, again, this is like the sixth film. And I remember when it came out, this is the sixth film about Hunter Thompson. Uh, and I, I just go like, what is this obsession with making films about Hunter Thompson? I mean, I love Hunter Thompson as much as the next guy. Uh, but five or six movies about Hunter Thompson. There is the last track, and I have to look it up, but there's a movie called Freak Power in 2020 by DJ Watkins. There is Fear and Loathing in Gonzo Vision, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas with Johnny Depp. Uh, that's the Gilliam movie uh, with Benicio Del Toro. Where the Buffalo Roam? Where the Buffalo Roam with Bill Murray. Buy the Ticket, Take the Ride, which is the best documentary. There's Breakfast with Hunter, which is another documentary. And there's this movie called uh, uh, Fear and Loathing in Aspen. Um, now, I finally got to watch this movie the other night. And to my complete uh, shock, the star of the movie is Amaryllis Fox. And she's shown here on the left of this uh, Bulger actor. It was pretty good, by the way. Uh, playing a woman. And I had to like do a deep dive on this on my own. That's Amarillo's Fox. She's playing a woman named uh, uh, Peggy C Clifford, who was a reporter for the Aspen local paper at the time in 1970, when this movie is set. Uh, when Hunter Thompson is running for sheriff in Aspen, uh, he loses, of course, and the movie uh, covers the race for sheriff, which a bunch of these other docs already did. This is directed by Bobby Kennedy III, who was at the Sirhan parole hearing with me and his father, a man named RFK Jr. And uh, George, another Kennedy, um, not George Kennedy, there was there was another Kennedy, his brother, older brother from uh, who works at Fox. But Bobby Kennedy III directed this feature, uh, and it's not a documentary, it's a feature film dramatically acted by Amaryllis Fox, who's the star of the movie. Uh, now, in the here's the here's the plot twist of the movie. She plays, get this, the campaign manager of Hunter S. Thompson Hunley, which I didn't want to oh tell you. Oh my god! That's right. She plans the campaign, and the dialogue in the movie is similar and this at the time the same as what she's doing as the campaign manager for Bobby's father which is now being investigated by the Federal Election Commission because she's related to the father-in-law. Okay, that's a lot to take in. So this movie was designed to give her an acting career. It didn't work. But the fact that she's pay playing the campaign manager in art and is now playing the campaign manager in reality is the craziest thing I've seen in decades regarding art versus reality. Uh, you can't make this shit up for sure, Hunley. Uh, I, we were watching this. I was falling off the couch laughing. And uh, she's not a bad actress. I, I have to be fair. The guy is a great Hunter Thompson. She plays uh, Peggy uh, Clifford, by the way, wrote a book called To Aspen and Back. Uh, she was there during the 70s, uh, a legitimate reporter. 
I think she passed away like two years ago, three years ago, which is probably how they couldn't get the rights to the book. Uh, but they go around and she portrays her, I guess, because she's dead. Anyway, so she is organizing this campaign and doing everything she's doing today for RFK Jr. I thought that was a fascinating story, and I, I just thought our audience would would really enjoy that. Um, just crazy, man. Crazy. Thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> just absolutely you know, crazy. Why is there so much art imitating life? I mean, you know, like like Helena Hutchins' father being yeah. the commander yeah. of the... Uh, uh, Hunt for Red Hunter October. Or, yeah. yeah. And, uh, because uh, they're in bed together. The, uh, these groups are in Hollywood, the CIA, and politics are all in bed together. You've got these overlapping storylines. It's not a coincidence anymore, folks. These are intentional situations. She wants to be the campaign manager. And I predict, you know, as I said to Rich all, all, during the week, we were talking about her uh, putting out yet another position uh, Twitter video about the positions of... of uh, RFK Jr. And I said to Rich, have you ever seen this from a campaign manager? And he said, never in my life. The fact that she's putting out video after video after video about the campaign is indicative that A, uh, she and her former employer are running the campaign, or B, or both, that she wants to be the VP nominee of RFK Jr., which I am predicting he will pick her as VP candidate uh, for his fictitious campaign. family tradition. Yes, right? that's right. That's right. And there's also a family tradition that a Kennedy, which he's now, as I predicted, dropped the name Fox Hunley. It's now Amaryllis Kennedy, which you saw predicted on the Amaryllis Fox episode that we did on this channel, which I highly recommend. You'll see her connections to uh, the Central Intelligence Agency. <sighs> Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. And I'm a huge Hunter Thompson fan. They were doing this uh, kind of like what's his name does um, the documentary filmmaker Taxi to the Dark Side, um, um, whose father was a CIA. Operative. Gibney? Alex Gibney. Uh, Alex Gibney did a documentary on the counterculture where he destroyed the counterculture. These are attempts to gather hipster counterculture cool voters and if you see this document you see this feature film by bobby kennedy the third who oddly enough in a scene set in san francisco plays jan wenner of rolling stone magazine and uh i thought that was fascinatingly interesting oh my god yeah yeah, yeah. all right well, anyway i just wanted to get that out there okay let's move on okay i got a short one here um cold weather is a problem especially if you have a Tesla. Oh, I, I saw that. I read that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I, and this is, you know, this is a public service message. Like, I, yeah. I think the EVs now, PSA. are, I think that, you know, I, I'm fine with EVs, fine, drive your Tesla, but keep in mind that it's like owning a convertible or a motorcycle. I think it's more of a sport car or a spare yeah. car than it is a main transportation. Mm -hmm. And these things are going to bite you in the ass. I mean, you see that going on in Chicago. So you've already got a grid problem in California. Yeah. And you've got weather problems. If it's freaking cold, you've got a dead Tesla. So please note that, folks. And you know, people will try to say, well, if you do, 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 do. It's like, no, you shouldn't have to take a course on being able to turn on your car right. and charge it. Yeah, they're banning uh, non-electric trucks at the point of the port of Long Beach in a, in a year or two. Uh, and that's going to be an interesting mess down there at the port of Long Beach is one of the biggest in the country. Uh, I just want to get back to one political uh, race that we haven't covered. And that's the George Gasson uh, district attorney's race here in Los Angeles. They had a debate the other night here in the first debate uh, last night. And uh, there's nine people running for the seat and nine people are unknowns. And he is sitting with a 13 to 15% approval rating, which may be enough to beat these nine people who are gonna split the vote with three, four, five, six, seven percent of the vote. And he may get reelected simply because there's too many freaking people running against this guy. I was super depressed watching this thing last night. Uh, this is a guy that everybody um, wants to get rid of, but nobody of any name recognition is willing to run against them. It's mostly people from the DA's office who hate his guts, but they have no name recognition or money and I started to get super depressed over it. And they can't get behind just one. Right. It's right. annoying. It's like, just get behind one. 
No. All of you get out. Just get behind one, and then all nope. of you. Mo- yeah, whatever. What a pain yeah. in the ass. Yeah. Um, I thought of you when I saw this headline. Yet another teacher. Yeah, uh, it's just aid. too much. It's just too much. It's just too much. I mean, it's got. It just goes on and on and on. How about having? Here's an idea. How about having congressional hearings on it, where you bring in these people and just go, "What the hell's going on?" You know what I mean? It's time. It's time. There's nine million of these cases. Thank you, Patrick Henry. Uh, there's just too many of these cases. But my favorite story of the week in, in, in terms of passing legislation or creating meaningless legislation, Ted Lieu, the progressive Chinese crazy American leftist uh, congressman from California, has uh, created legislation. What's that? That's almost redundant. Isn't it? <laughs> I know. That was intentionally redundant. <laughs> He's created a bill uh, which must, you know, I, I couldn't live without this law, uh, banning glue traps for mice. And you just go, glue traps for mice. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Oh, sure. Everybody says the, the poor mice. Here's why it's interesting to me. In New York, there's a tradition, and I was part of it, and everybody else was, where if you caught a mouse on a glue trap, you flung it out your window onto the sidewalk and then waited for girls to scream when they stepped on it. And now children growing up will not have, because of Ted Lou, the joy of hearing girls scream when they step on the... <laughs> Still living glued mouse on the glue trap in New York. Oh my God. Sorry. Well, yeah, it's a, it is a shame. It such right. a terrible it's like the lawsuit. Roach Motel. You see, you didn't grow up with this. The Roach Motel, roaches crawl in, they never crawl out. Right. Uh, and, you know, somebody who was asking me the other day why I do the dishes immediately when I put them in the sink is because if you're a New Yorker, you're trained from birth to never, ever leave a dirty dish in the sink. You just wash it the second you use it. And that's because of roaches in New York. So uh, I do them just subconsciously. As soon as I got a dirty dish, I just wash it. Uh, but other people come from the school, let them stack up, you know, and then you do them all and it takes an hour or whatever. Okay. The reason I don't do that is because of being raised in New York City and trained that you can't allow the bat signal to go up for roaches. The same is true for the mice. The glue trap is as New York as it gets, as is the Roach Motel. When you caught the mouse, you could put little pieces of cheese on your glue trap and customize it, whatever you want to do. But once you caught the mouse, there's two things you can do. You could throw him into your garbage can, still alive, and he's squirming around in your garbage can. Or you fling it out the window onto the sidewalks of New York. Most of my friends did the latter of the two. And after a few minutes, you heard the screams of someone who has stepped on it or noticed it, which is kind of a little button on the humorous event. So I just wanted to put that out there as urban folklore. Wow. Okay. okay. Uh, this is and I blame Ted Lou. I wouldn't even think about this for years. I haven't even thought about this. But Ted Lou, by creating this legislation banning the glue trap, may take the joy of gluing mice away from uh, people growing up in the uh, urban environments. Of well, another dark story, Mark. Sports Illustrated, entire oh, yeah. staff yeah. being laid off. That's a tough break, man. That's a tough one. Yeah, it is. Um, 70 plus years old. I, I don't even remember. The, it was like 70, 75 years old. Long story magazine. But again, victim of Get Woke, Go Broke. Yeah, that's a Time Inc. Uh, uh, I mean, they that's a big company. That's, you know, the number of sister publications. Right. Well, Time Inc. got rid of them a few years ago, I think. And and then they just kept getting progressively woker. So they were like, yeah. OK, yeah, yeah. we've got to have heavy um, Sports Illustrated models. And now we've got to have trans models. Now we got to have Martha Stewart or, or whatever. They got what they, they deserved. Just, they got what they deserved. I mean, uh, we did a, a Sports Illustrated parody at Lampoon, I think, going back in 1974. Um, that's how far back the Lampoon parody went. Uh, you know, that's a sign of respect for Sports Illustrated back in the old days. Uh, I think we did two of them. One was one was Pete Rose with a walker uh, at the age of 80. And another one was a, uh, I think we did three. There was one of a Russian weightlifter uh, with a bulge in her crotch uh, in the Olympics. And then there was one with a, a female catcher with a, her bra on backwards or something. Mm. It might have been That's- three parodies with that. All right, let me get through some super chats because they've been in here for a while. Hold uh, on, I just want to give a – before you do, I just want to give a shout-out to uh, Jim Irsay, uh, my old friend who, again, has overdosed on uh, on, on drugs, of course, 
the owner of the Indianapolis Colts, uh, who happens to have the Kerouac scroll for On the Road, uh, Jim Irsay, uh, again overdosed for the nine millionth time. Uh, we'll see what happens with him. I don't know if he's still alive right now or dead, but I just want to put that out there. I thought he passed. Oh, okay. He may be dead. I don't know. I thought he was, he, he may have overdosed and died. Maybe he's in a coma, but wouldn't be the first time. Lovely, lovely. Um, oh, he's still alive. Okay. okay. Yeah, no, I thought so. The uh, paramedics, you know, found him unconscious, blah, blah, blah. Wow. Yeah. All right. Um, Thomas Grigsby, Mark is showing his open-mindedness and meeting again with a Jersey guy. Jersey is ranking up. Who's the Jersey guy? Uh, Rich, I guess. I oh, yeah. Rich no, that's why I like with. Rich. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, to me, it's like a guy I grew, I grew up with. That's why I, we didn't, I, I, I understand you should introduce the guy, but I just feel like I know him. That's kind of like, you know, would be like introducing your brother. I mean, All right, I well, like Pasha that. speaks to that, too. Never mind, Rich. We know him. Who are right. you guys? Right. Who are we to? That's more important. We <laughs> to, me to, you know. Um, Ike Broflovsky, Vivek, and English-only ballots. Is Trump team being cautious with him? He gets weird moments more often. Skinny from Chicago, Vivek, and Obama. Yeah, he's young. Um, again, I, I've said the same thing. I look forward to him in 2028. I mean, he's yeah. 38 years old. The guy can go 20 more years and run, you know, down the road. There's a lot of ramp there. And I think that Trump genuinely likes him. Um, who, who he did knows? a great job dropping out and endorsing Trump, though. That was a great job. And I think uh, either chief of staff or attorney general uh, would be too good. He's a law school graduate of Yale, if I remember. Yeah, well, you saw. Well, you could also right. be uh, health and human services because he is a pharmaceutical guy. No, okay. I'm just saying he's in. Yeah. He, he, he's he spent thirty million dollars of his own money. He doesn't yeah. need money. Um, I don't know. I I, I think he's I would. Uh, I, I think you got to put him in a place where that it means something, like attorney general, and and let him let him go to work. You know, instead of putting in some nice guy in there, put in a, a brutal hatchet man like this guy. Let him start chopping some scalps. Yeah, that's one thing I was thinking of that was interesting. While he was campaigning, even though he was, you know, against Trump, he never really went at Trump. He almost was acting like the vice president because you know how the vice president can be a pit bull. Yeah, he has that tendency, well, once and in a he while. was, you know, thra you know, thrashing against the others and things. And like be Ag Agnew-esque. I mean, that's uh, Agnew and Cheney, I guess, come to mind as as pit bulls. But um, you know, for the most part, they're kind of sidelined. True. Um, candidates who suspend stay on the primary ballot. Yes, if it's oh, ballots yeah. already printed. I mean, yeah, what are we going to yeah. do? Yeah. Um, Kim Opperman waving hello to Eric, Mark, and Rich from Snowy, Ohio. Love you guys. Oh, hi, Kim. We're going to be there. I hope it's not snowy when I get there. Is it yeah. snow, snow there in the middle of March? What's the deal? I think it could. They can. I think they can get some of that lake effect that Buffalo gets on occasion. I'm, but I'm, I'm not sure. To, I'm going to have to do this remotely then i'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> oh great Wait, i just want to give a shout out to these people uh this is what i just got in the mail which I, i'm gonna have to read over the weekend look at the size of this thing eric Good this guy. is uh a bright shining lie by neil sheehan is one of the definitive books on the vietnam war uh oh, through the uh, jfk book fund people who include heather rose brian nelson george erickson kevin judge uh shane culkin and some cat named Six Semper Tyrannus, uh, who've donated for us to get these JFK related books. So thanks. Nice. Um, BTK, can Trump run from New York State, I guess, and add Brian Donalds, Florida, or Byron Donalds? Yeah, but, but Byron's already elected. I think he, he wants to keep people who are already elected, elected in their current position. Yeah, you don't want to strip people out of their seats. I mean, uh, Jeff Sessions, see him. Yeah. I mean, you could take a congressional, the rule of thumb is you could take a congressman out in a safe district because that's replaceable, uh, but not a senator or not a governor. Usually but they're the not rule, safe the, anymore. The of, right, but yeah, losing a congressional seat is not going to be the same as losing a senatorial seat like oh, you did sure. with, with Jeff Sessions. So, I mean, or that's a governorship. Why, yeah, that's why the rule exists. You can lose a congressional seat. I mean, that's not going to kill you. Uh, but again, it should be someone who you know is loyalty is really the main thing we saw that with uh, mike pence and now we're seeing it with hunter pence and my uh, hunter pence was a, a, a an outfielder for the giants uh, hmm. who I, I didn't like <laughs> okay <laughs> mike pence was the vice, <laughs> mike pence was the vice president of uh, from indiana 
Uh, I don't know if you needed to. Or deliver. governor of Indiana, right? Whatever he was from Indiana. Yeah, I think uh, it was governor. You but, didn't um, need to have him to deliver the state of Indiana is what I was getting at. Oh, no. Right. No. And, and, and I think that if you took someone – uh, where South Carolina might be in play. Uh, is that possible that South Carolina might be in play or no? Uh, North Carolina, I think, is risky. Well, maybe it's South North Carolina. Carolina. Yeah. yeah, maybe it's, I could get confused now. Um, but yeah, North Carolina is probably purplish more than South Carolina. It's going there. North Carolina is like Virginia. You know, Northern Virginia is creeping down mm -hmm. and pulling uh, North Carolina too. It's uh, frustrating. Because you have all the people moving in there from in Charlottesville. Yeah, and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see. Barnes thinks it's Ben Carson. I won't well, I saw I saw what's his name the other day that uh, Sebastian Gorka and he uh, claims claims to have inside information as to who it is and he whatever that's worth. He said emphatically it's not Ben Carson. So uh, for whatever that's worth, uh, you can you know take that into consideration. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what you get with Ben Carson. I, I you know, not that I dislike Ben Carson. Oh, he's a good guy. He's, he's in the administration for sure. Yeah, he was in the department of HUD. He was head of HUD, right? I believe so. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I don't know. You know, he could be. He could be. But like we said, and Barnes has said, you need somebody to make the impeachment uh, uh, not an option. I, I think that one argument in Vivek's favor, by the way, though, is the youth. So. Ben Carson might be getting too old, you know, having yeah, two yeah, yeah. old guys at the top. And I just thought about that with Larry Elder, too. It's like he's not exactly young either. Um, he'll be, you know, mid 70s or, or whatever by his time he's done. Mm -hmm. If Trump can find somebody young enough because he's only got one term. So really, it is important to try to get somebody that can carry the MAGA, leg the MAGA legacy. Well, it could forward. have been this, this governor of Florida. I forget his name. Uh, yeah, see, but apparently everybody is going to forget. Maybe him. he just freaked out and said, you know, I don't want to be in the national spot and be the vice president. I'd rather just do this because like it may be a warm bucket of spit, like many people have said, you know, maybe it's a thankless job. Maybe it's better to be the governor or something else than be the VP and, and just be Mike Pence for four years, you know? Yeah, but I would think it'd be more desirable now because you're only talking about four years, not eight. And um you know that you're in line to take over. So it, it is. Um, how often does you, how often do you think Kamala Harris checks on the health of Joe Biden during the course of the day? How many <laughs> is is I, I, there somebody in our office who just says still alive, still alive, still alive? Oh, God, that cackle. That cackle. That's the cackle of, of, of munchies and edibles. That's the uh, you know, that's the Cheech and Sean cackle that she's got going on. That's but right. she didn't That's have right. that. But she didn't have that back when she was attorney general. She didn't never had that. That is a progressive thing from, uh, you know, shaking and baking in the morning and taking edibles or hitting the bong and a progressive effect of, of weed over many years. Well, that would make sense with her word salad because yeah, I mean, yeah. but because Biden found the one person yeah. who could sound as nonsensical as her. I mean, maybe Fetterman would be another yeah. choice. But it, it's Look Fetterman's now a man of the people. Mm hmm. Fetterman's mm -hmm. going after the he, he's another guy put his finger in the wind and realizes, you know, I, I, I got to change or I'm going to go down, you know. Yeah, no kidding. Um, Blaine, uh, thoughts on the significance of Jamie Dimon, Davos, comments about Trump? Uh, well, as Barra said, Jamie Dimon, you know, yeah, we covered that. That's a good Trump point. And, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm more interested in that Morgan Stanley uh, analyst who talked about the fact that he, uh, they believe that Biden will not be the nominee. Uh, I'm interested in that analysis, how they came to that conclusion, because I just did it by the seat of my pants. <laughs> but I'm curious as to what what kind of mathematical economic logarithm do they put together to come up with that at Morgan, at Morgan Stanley? Probably reality. I mean, yeah. if they have any kind of actuarial ability, okay. they, All would right. think, All right. okay. they would be like, right. OK, can we deal right. with President Kamala? No. Right. Can Biden get rid of Kamala? Right. No. no. Yeah. So it's, what uh, is the only way you can get rid of her? Well, I'll tell you get another thing. I, I talked about <laughs> this on the show yesterday with Greg Goodell down in Alabama. Um, I believe that Hunter Biden spent weeks in the White House and everybody was wondering why he was living there. And as I said on the show yesterday, I believe he and his attorney, the sugar brother, 
were hammering out a pardon deal from the father. And you say, well, why do you have to hammer that out? And I'll tell you why I believe went into this two to three weeks stay in the White House. The father said to him, sure, I'll pardon you. And Hunter countered by, what if you drop dead tomorrow, dad? And then the dad says, I don't plan on doing that. But then reality set in. And once the reality set in and he said to his dad, I can't take that chance, they both looked at each other and knew what the answer was. They had to get Kamala Harris on the phone. And they got Kamala Harris on the phone and they asked her if she would guarantee the pardon of Hunter Biden. So she said, of course, yes, but that wasn't good enough for Hunter Biden. He wanted it in writing and she was not going to put that in writing. So that debate, and this is just my take on this, yeah. that situation of negotiation of him being in that White House was about him getting Kamala Harris on board to pardon him in the event of his father uh, dying. And he had to get some sort of uh, 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 official or unofficial thing from Kamala Harris agreeing to pardon him if she became president of the United States. That's why it took three weeks. That's why he was in the White House that long. And obviously some other things about coordinating his defense and lawyering up and things of that nature. But the, 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 the pardon from his dad is a given. That's or, he not, could, or he could have an undated document. <laughs> well, whatever, dad, whatever it is, I don't know the details. Yeah. Right. They mm -hmm. had to get something from Kamala Harris to ensure that if his father died, that he could that he would still get pardoned by her so he can now take the bullet for his father because that is what's going on that's why this thing is now done the trial's going to be in 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 June here in LA of him they're saying this is a slam dunk there's no defense on what he did that the the uh, the district the attorney general or the prosecutor uh has him dead to rights he is going to go down and he will indeed be pardoned by his father. And all the pundits agree, except what do you do if the father dies? Then Kamala Harris says, I don't need that baggage. In other words, we saw this once before, and you'll remember this in history, Eric. Mm -hmm. Gerald Ford. Mm -hmm. that's and that what cost we, him the presidency. That's right. But it also gave him the presidency. Right. That's what I was going for. Because mm -hmm. for him to take the, the, the VP slot, he had to agree to pardon Nixon. Now, how do you get that agreement? Well, you have to be cocksure. Uh, is anybody going to put it in writing? Not on your life. Never in writing, never in cash, as a famous attorney once said. And I believe- Always in cash. Always in cash, <laughs> right. Always in cash, never in writing. And I believe the same thing was true of Kamala Harris, which is why he was in the White House for a number of weeks uh, last month. Well, he uh, better that, get something on her, like maybe get doing lines with him, because- Honestly, I don't trust her. No, no, no. I agree. Friend. It's it's shaky. It's shaky. But there is a way traditionally to do it. I don't know mm -hmm. what they did in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're talking about the former attorney general of the state of California issuing a pardon to a coke snorting, gun toting uh, bad boy in California is a little dicey. It's a little dicey for her. So there oh. must have been something offered uh, that she accepted. But nevertheless, how do you get the guarantee that she's going to pardon him? You know, it'd be hilarious is if they just delayed the trial. Let's delay the trial till 2025. Uh, well, that I don't know if that's going to happen because they set the <laughs> trial date uh, here. And now he's going in for the subpoena that we discussed last week. He's going to be deposed for 100 hours behind closed doors uh, by con uh, congressional investigators. And that, not the buffoons you see. Uh, who are uh, the congressmen. It's really the investigators behind the scenes who know how to do this type of work. <laughs> and they all have them, Chuck Grassley. All of these guys have top-notch investigators behind the scenes who are going to grill the living shit out of him. They're bringing in Bobolinsky now. This is what we're waiting for. That's February 28th. Uh, it's going to be a leap year a gift. Uh, I don't know if this is a leap year, uh, but there may not be any February 29th for Hunter Biden. Maybe not. Right. Um, Mo Bishop, Mark knows Carl Reiner was a shooter. This is back to the Rob Reiner conversation. Rob Reiner was a, uh, Carl Reiner was a straight shooter, 2000 year old man with Mel Brooks. There's two albums I'd recommend, both of the comedy albums uh, of the 2000 year old man with Carl Reiner and, um, and uh, Mel Brooks. Definitely. Um, <clears throat> Dick Dickerson gave 10 memberships to folks. Thank you, man. Thank you. Hmm. 
And that's like a fifty dollar uh, gift wow. to us. So wow! Thank you very much. Um, Patricia Luna just sent you each twenty dollars on PayPal. Love the show. Ah, well, thank right. you. There's a, for the book fund, Mark. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, let me tell you something. These books are coming left and right. I sent you a couple. I'm like, I had them in doubles. You oh. you should get it tomorrow. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Pasha, you were talking about RFK Jr. and party name recognition. Just to be a good guy, I hereby offer him the use of the Pasha party. What could be better? Um, don't quit your day job. It's all I can tell you, Pasha. <laughs> Uh, Justin Wright, got a call from Amos Miller's farm to let me know they are still working to fulfill orders. I will be mm. ordering more. Do not care about the delays. That's wow. good. Wow. Wow. He's good, like good the, he's the Max Yasger. He's the Max Yasger of the right. You can look, look that up, people. <laughs> uh, GP Winston, question. Eric, former Tucsonian here, wonders about high school you went to when you lived in Tucson. CDO. CDO. Everybody knows that. There's a plaque. I just want to give it another great L.A. story. Um, bronze as a metal has now become valuable in recycling. I don't know what's going on in the bronze market, uh, but thieves have now stolen over 300 bronze plaques from L.A. County cemeteries in the past few weeks, uh, breaking into the cemeteries at night and stealing off the mausoleums, usually a bronze plaque uh, that you know says who's who and what, going back to 1885. These are oh, not, uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. So this has become a local news story now with a reporter who reluctantly is being sent to these cemeteries at night uh, with a camera crew to see if they could capture any of these thieves uh, stealing the bronze plaques off of dead people's uh, um, uh, coffins and mausoleums. Well, uh, as long as it's under $900 in value, isn't it legal there? Well, they're not under nine hundred dollars in value. In fact, they're quite valuable. And 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 Jesus. imagine just going into a recycling plant where it says, you know, uh, Colonel uh, D. W. Griffith, eighteen eighty to nineteen oh five, and it's the guy goes, "Yeah, it. sure, here's three hundred dollars for that one. Here's three hundred. Yeah, it's that's sick. Oh that, no, they've done it hundreds of times. This is not just a couple of kids. Right. Well, they, they, they need to just go stake out the. That's what she was centers. doing. It. That's what she. No, was, not the cemetery. She will. The she recycling will. centers. Yeah, yeah. It's Stop relatively, them. Don't it's buy it. New, yeah. You know, it's it's kind of like a. You want to solve they, it? They, they treat it like this, a pawnbroker. They, they did lose some statues. They were cutting down with metal cutting saws a couple of years ago. They were cutting down statues. Uh, in L.A. and taking them to recycling places, uh, meth-addicted uh, drug addicts. Yeah, well, I, I would just, um, the recycling places, I would just seize the material from them and say, sorry, you lost your money. And well, then I, they'll stop doing it. This is L.A. They don't care. They want them to do it. So I guess, you know. Oh, okay. Uh, Soltron, has Mark read E. Jean Carroll's book about Hunter S. Thompson? I have not. No, I have not. In fact, I have um, been watching some of her little video clips. Um, this woman is batshit crazy. I don't care what planet you're from. Uh, she's a nut. She's a. T I watched her with Anderson Cooper the other night, and I watched her. Look, she looks like she oh, got. A ball. Yeah, when she said that uh, grape is sexy, that one. Uh, well, she also painted all the rocks and trees blue in her backyard because the water level had declined in the creek, and she took a little walking tour of her property upstate New York. It looked like. Holy cow, what she did to this property. She is nuts. She is completely nuts. But but you see, you and I are allowed to say that, but apparently Trump can't say that, which is hilarious. Well, this this is what I said the other day. The, the Alex Jones case was a forerunner to this. They didn't care about Alex Jones. The Alex Jones case was the forerunner to the Trump case. And in fact, the entire Me Too movement was a forerunner to getting Trump now. That's why they did Me Too. That's why Me Too ended... Uh, with Cuomo uh, taking him down from governor uh, of New York and ended officially when they knocked on the door of Joe Biden. The Me Too movement was designed. They took down some minor media figures on the left initially, but the big game hunting was this Carroll case. How many years does this Carroll case go back? It goes back right before Me Too started, Eric. Right. That's why they changed the law, too. So they could right. bring right. it in. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I am suggesting to you, that Alex Jones's case, the structure of that case, and the structure of the Carol Me Too uh, allegations, uh, that Me Too was designed for Trump, as was the Alex Jones case designed for Trump. Yeah, I mean, possible. Um, 
Speaking of Me Too, question for Mark. What's your take on the Ron Jeremy case? Have you ever met Ron? I've never met Ron, but somebody else was talking about meeting Ron Jeremy in a recent book I was just reading. Oh, it was Rodney Dangerfield. He had run it. He had met Ron Jeremy, and uh, he I, he told Ron Jeremy he told Rodney that um, he wanted to move from L.A. because the people were too crazy. And Rodney said, "Here's a guy who's a porn star, and he wants to leave L.A. because he says the people are too crazy." And Ron Jeremy had the superpower if you call it that, of have, having the ability to do something to himself that you might have to pay someone else to do, if that yes. makes any sense to people. Yes. Um, Self-accurate. Self uh, I'll leave that to you. I'll leave that to you, that word salad. Good luck with that, Unley. I won't get into he it. He self-actualized. Right. Anyway, um, it's, another, it's another takedown. Ron Jeremy's been around for so many years. And uh, did you? I, I saw pictures of him. I think they might have been a couple of years ago. He looked rough, and I think he's got full-on dementia now or something. Yeah, they he, don't care. They don't. Not care. able to. They're uh, indicting the name and the idea. That's what Harvey Weinstein was about. That's what Garrison Keillor was about. That's what all of these are about. Charlie Rose. Uh, they're all about the image of Al the Franken. Man. Al Franken. Yeah, I mean, all of them, and and and. All of it was designed for what we're seeing this month uh, with Carol. The fact that she, because think about it, she doesn't even have to say what year this happened. Because then if you narrowed it down, Trump could say, I was doing this on this particular date, August 25th, 1996. Okay, so that law had to be changed. Then it, they said, well, he, you know, he may have a, 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 a diary or a calendar for every day of the year, Eric. So what did they do? They said she didn't even need the year that she was supposedly nope. assaulted by uh, the former or future or the president. season or the season. Right. And the fact that it was in Bergdorf Goodman's during the course of the day with salespeople running around and there's no witnesses. None of that mattered. That's why they created me, too. That was the point. This is why they created me, too. This is my take on it. Fair enough. Uh, George yeah. Erickson, question. What are your thoughts about General Mike Flynn as Trump's VP? Nah, it doesn't bring much to the table. I mean, he could. I would put him where Miley is or whoever this, this Austin Powers, who apparently has uh, colon cancer and didn't bother to tell anybody. I mean, that's uh, that would be a great job for Flynn. He could use his expertise more as the head of the Pentagon than as a, a, a thankless VP job, in my humble opinion. True. The, uh, one thing he would be good for, if in VP, though, is they would not take out Trump to get him. Right. But also, <laughs> so, yeah. also when Trump, you know, ordered the generals to remove the troops from Syria and they bragged that they disagreed with it, they disobeyed his orders. If you had a Mike Flynn uh, in that position, uh, you wouldn't have that that, oh, tre no. that treasonous activity by the Pentagon. Yeah. Not only that, he knows all these MFers yeah. by yeah. being in and he could say, Fire that one, keep that one, fire that one, keep that one, da, 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 you know, just right down the line. As sec dev, he would be phenomenal. Phenomenal, that would be a great choice. phenomenal choice. Um, Derek Sanders with a $50 super sticker. Thank you very much. Derek, Derek Sanders. I do appreciate it. We were demonetized already, by the way. Oh, so. no, I'm so shocked. I can't believe it. But this, so you know, this helps. Yeah, uh, the, that's why the, the book, sponsor the helps fan, so much. The sponsor, the book fund, the super, the book fund, the super chats. Um, these tips when we go over to locals for the secret uh, conversations. Yep. Um, who besides Vivek prevents Trump being removed? Anybody uh, they hate more? No. Uh, oh, what's your name from Arizona? Oh, Carrie Lake. Oh, who yeah, they hate Carrie Lake. Sure. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I think she's going to lose that Senate seat anyway. Well, depending yeah, on she's a, she's in a dead heat with this guy Gallego, Gallego, and it doesn't look good. I mean, the numbers, the polling numbers, are not favorable for her. She's in a dead heat with a guy who's so far left, uh, he makes Chairman Mao look like a, a middle of the roader. But she's got Trump coattails, so that could yeah, no, it yeah, could yeah, 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 yeah. come that time yeah, because people you know Trump voters will turn out for her in Arizona. Yeah, no, clearly sure. she's boxed in, win or lose. So I mean, she uh, she can't. There's no place for it to go uh, af until after the election. Uh, Mad Mayhem. If Trump wins, how good are his odds at cleaning out the rot and ending corruption? I mean, yeah, first of all, it, clearing out the rot and ending corruption, it's, it's such a broad, vague, am amorphous term. I mean, you, you know, it, it's, everybody's 
a lot of people think all or none thinking or black and white thinking like somebody's going to wave a magic wand and all corruption is going to disappear. That's insane. That's no, insane. It'll you got to you take it. Right. Of course, you got to take a piece at a time. But you can change the culture. Of that's course. that's of course. that's what you you know, like the biggest thing that Reagan did is he changed the attitude of the country right. from losers to winners. And yeah. I can see Trump doing that, too. You know, Biden is like the losing sports team. I heard this the other night, but it's true. It's like if you look at Biden, you just feel like, oh, God, it's the Cubs or it's this loser team. Everything. It's just like this old coach is so sad. Everything else. Whereas Trump is like, I'm a winner. Every part of it is a winner. And you can't help but feel the whole attitude raise. <laughs> and that's that's what gets the culture is it brings in and attracts the right people who will find other people. And over time, it will change, in my opinion. That's a good thing. Um, GP Winston, since Gavin Newsom rejected the proposed ban on tackle football in California, no. do you think he's not all bad or is he no, trying to he's... sell himself? No, he's an idiot. But anyway, no, idiot. it's just he's it was a, it was a bridge too far. I mean, it was just too much. I mean, the, the, the banning tackle football for kids, 93 out of the top 100 uh, TV events annually, annually are NFL football games. Think about 100 random events. Uh, the biggest audience is 93 out of 100 is, is, is NFL football. I mean, you don't have to be a, a you know a middle of the road or to just be politically savvy. You know, it's just a bridge too far. And this is a baseball fan telling you this, by the way. Yeah, and, so, and, which I think you and, and a Packer baseball. fan and a Packer fan, but I, I I do prefer baseball to football. But I I'm so happy we beat the uh, the Cowboys. And in fact, they they for some reason. They were taunting the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders who are now saying that they have PTSD from the backer players. Uh, Saturday, five o'clock versus the Niners. Uh, it's going to be an interesting game. So we know where Mark will be. Oh, yeah. uh, Lynn Harder. What about Elise Stefanik? Uh, yeah, we yeah, discussed that. Up. We discussed yeah. that. Uh, not completely trustworthy. We don't know where she uh, sits on uh, certain issues. And uh, Rich pointed that out. Uh, by the way, the People's Pundit, if you want to go over there and watch Rich, um, Highly recommended during the election season, which is what we're in now. Now we're the game is on. You know, we waited for three, four years for this week. Uh, now it's going to come fast and furious. There's a month gap uh, between New Hampshire and South Carolina, I believe. Uh, but Tuesday is North is uh, New Hampshire uh, primary. So, and when we're in, don't forget when we're in uh, uh, Ohio, we've got the mm -hmm. Ohio primary. Which Do you think I there will be a primary? Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering. Yeah, I'm, uh, well, oh, there, oh, there, that's oh, a good be, question. Will it even matter? Because oh. if if he runs a table real quick and they drop out, there may not be a primary at that time. Well, I mean, there was supposed to be a debate on CNN uh, again, and of course, there was nobody to show, so they canceled the debate. You know, in terms of uh, uh, what's his name, DeSantis didn't want to show up to debate. You know, Nikki Haley. Well, she no refused debate. it, I thought, because Trump wouldn't go. Right, but they, again, they canceled it themselves. The networks, you know, but yeah. well, because nobody cares. We'll we'll see. What I happens. mean, without Vivek, he was the only entertaining part of the debates when he was attacking. I, I can them. happily say I didn't watch one minute of the debates for whatever the hell that was, and I'm a stronger man for it. Uh, I have no pants on right now, but I feel stronger uh, about not having seen that chicanery. Now, that being said, we're going to be in Ohio in Youngstown, March 15th, that weekend. The, the primary is scheduled for Tuesday, March 17th. I think it is whatever that Tuesday is right there. Uh, so we're going to be there one way or the other, you know? And, oh, for uh, sure. Well, we got, uh, St. Patrick's day. We got St. Patty's day. Uh, half of me is going to get drunk. The other half is going to look for discount liquors. Uh, so I'll be busy St. Patty's day as I always am. But Eric has been selling, some tickets to these events. I don't know what's going on. If people... uh, they're doing very well. Um, I think we've almost a third gone on VIPs in less than a week. Oh my god! Oh my god! So they're definitely, definitely moving. And well, how do they get these tickets? These people. Okay, I there mean... are links to the tickets. What in the descriptions of the shows on YouTube on Rumble, but. Keep this in mind that there is a major discount if you are a locals paid supporter. So literally, locals members get $50 off for the VIP, $25 off for the meetup. And if it's something that you want to do and you want to do both, effectively, you can pay for locals and get five extra bucks off still um, with those discounts. 
So okay. keep that in mind. It is a very good deal. Well, and regular I, people can buy tickets too, right? Absolutely. Regular. They can buy the tickets. Will, will they feel like Mama Luke's because they're not getting the discount or they'll feel okay? I don't know how they'll feel. I'm just oh, saying okay. that essentially. All right. Okay. I, I'm just saying I might feel like a Mama Luke, but maybe they could join locals, you're saying. Yeah, they could uh, be a paid supporter of locals, get the discount. They oh, get they to hang get out with us. We're going right. there right now. I mean, it, where? To it's a no boat. It's a no brand. No, we're going to locals. Oh, we're going to locals. Right. Good point. That's right. Good because point. Oswald is leading the way, and we can discuss your wardrobe choices and uh, lack of pants or whatever when we get there. Okay. Well, I'll be over there in a second. Where are you going to be? Um, probably on locals. Okay. See you there. I'll, I'll...